What's up guys? We are here at Daytona. For the very first time in my life, we're gonna do an endurance race with Evex Ritual. This is my first time racing at one of the most famous racetracks in the planet, Daytona International Speedway. I've done thousands of laps in this track in the simulator, but racing for 14 hours in real life is a totally different experience. I really didn't expect to suffer from heat exhaustion while driving or have mechanical issues in the car and get hit by a thunderstorm. But how did we go through all this and still get a podium? I also got to share the car with one of you, my sim racing students, Jared, and we did prep in the sim together in the week before the race. He did have experience in real life though, so it was easier to focus on the car handling aspect instead of safety measures for real life racing. One of the main challenges for us in this event is the fact that we did not have a very competitive car in a straight line, since the fastest cars in our class were four to five seconds quicker on the streets, which is pretty much the majority of the track. So we had to make sure to capitalize on every detail possible to not lose time. And that included pit practice and driver changes. He's staying out of his way, but just watch. Get up, Frank. So this is how we practice the driver changes. Don't expect anything fancy on my first attempt though. I'm really bad at this, but that's why we're here. That's why we're practicing. Smell your necks and then you're gonna swap it throughout you. Car off, put off the brake. Window net. Get the room, get the room. In the car, take control of the belt. If his hands are in your way, you just push them out. Just let Sneaky do it. Start to tighten your stuff, Swellio. Tighten the belts. What? I got, like your job, you shouldn't be clipping anything. You let him clip. Then I tight. Then you tight. Okay, so the guy getting out does the, the lap belt, and then the driver does the shoulder belt. Yeah, so the, yeah. the hands won't cross that way. Yeah, at that point, once this is clipped and those are tight, let him do his thing. You can start on the window net already. And now it's time to do the opposite. I'm going to get out of the car and practice helping the driver in. Crash it off. Ready? On my mark, key off, foot off the brake. Window net. Belt. Give him room. Give him room. Take control of the belts. You're clipping. I warned you, it's bad. It's gonna get better after some practice. The biggest problem here is that when I got out of the car, I did not loosen the belts. So I had to loosen it with the driver already there, which is a lot more difficult. I have never been good or fast with these belts. So today was finally time to figure out a way to do these things more quickly. So basically the driver change is quicker than the fueling of the car during the pit stop. So we do have some buffer there. We don't have to be extremely fast. We just need to do things in a solid way so that we don't lose too much time if anything goes wrong. Remember to loosen the belt before we get out next time. Really yep. But if we depended on every second of the driver change, this would be the perfect example of how to lose 30 seconds yeah. in the race. What? I can't loosen this one. You have to pull on the shrub. <sighs> Alright, window net. Once you're tight, Jared, you start the car and touch it off. Let's do that more times. Oh, we're gonna do it a fuck ton of more times. Let's just get in the rhythm. Honestly, here I'm just feeling ashamed of how bad I am. So I wanted to repeat this as many times as I could so I could become at least decent at this before the race. So here's our last attempt at the end of the practice session. Alright, take the ghost really up, slow as fast. Yep. You have to make sure everything is perfect. Helping the driver out of the car, then getting into the car, adjusting the seat distance and cushions, clipping and tightening the harnesses correctly, turning the car on, and traction and stability control off. All that while staying composed and ready to race. On the first attempt, I was super slow and confused with the pit practice, but I kind of got the hang of it eventually. I know I've been driving in real life for a year or so now, but it still, it still feels weird to see that's me in a racing suit getting into a race car about to race at Daytona it feels weird 
I'm not really sure if that will ever go away because honestly, I started like as a sim racer two years ago and it always hits me that this is so amazing. This is so amazing. Let's enjoy that. As always, I'm going to show you the entire lap, getting out of the pits, just feeling the car, just feeling the grip, just feeling the track. Of course, trying to not do anything stupid. I used to crash a lot on this pit exit in the simulator. So I was like, okay, no, nope, let's try to not do anything stupid. Also getting out of the pits here, making sure I'm not causing any problem with the fast guys and just feeling the grip. Let's try to already get into that rhythm, trying to not waste too much time, feeling the grip on the lowest speeds, just to make sure how much grip the car has. Already having to feel the grip limits somewhere even on the outlap, even on the cold tires, you already want to feel that. And then you start building up that confidence by getting the car to slide on the medium speed corners and then finally on the high speed stuff, you're gonna start sending it more and more. The skank here is pretty easy, just flat out, no big deal. And coming up on the West Horseshoe, quite long, almost double apexy corner. Very, very easy to overslow an entry. You have to carry a lot of speed if you wanna do this right. It's very important to know that there is a huge difference in grip from the racing line to just the outside because of the marbles. So you really don't feel that difference as much in the simulator. So I had to always keep that in mind. When you go a little bit wide, you have to be more careful. And then turn six, the last corner of the infield. And then I realized again, I'm fucking racing at Daytona. I mean, this is the part of the track where you do nothing racing technique wise, but it's just so amazing to be in this place. Didn't feel great to upshift from fourth gear to fifth and feel that you have absolutely no power though. Like you could actually feel as soon as you upshift from fourth to fifth that you lose all the acceleration. It feels like you're lifting. And then finally comes one of the most famous corners of this track, the bus stop. Of course, I'm not gonna send it yet, but let's feel it. Let's see what I can do here. That is the corner that most people crash. So I wanted to just feel more or less how much the car could rotate at a lower speed, feel if the car was oversteery, just to see how much I can force before it gets into a slide. That could mean slingshotting to the left and throwing the car into the wall. So check out this green car passing me right now. That is a car from my glass. That's how slow we were on a straight line. All right, so let's see what I can do on a fast lap now. I'm gonna show you the entire lap, sending the car a little bit more, trying to find the limit as fast as possible. Let's go. Breaking to T1 a little bit too hard on the ABS. Car under steer a lot went wide, but I was able to get a good exit. I'm getting a little bit too much over steer, trying to correct the car several times there, using all the track on the exit, and then setting up for the hairpin, but there's a car coming up behind. It's a prototype car, so I have to let him get the apex, but I'm gonna try to get the best exit I can. So I'm gonna try to set up a late apex to compensate that entry and get the best exit possible. Possible. Running a little bit too wide on this exit, which I think is the ideal because this car does not have a lot of power So you want to run wide a little bit more and carry more momentum And by the way, do you remember the green car from my class that passed me some time ago? So I'm so much quicker on the corners that I'm actually catching him up right now Like you can literally see how closer I get just under braking because of the grip that we have on the corners I mean, you can clearly see that he's kind of doing the wrong line <laughs> So that helps like he didn't use other track on entry or apex or exit so here you can see like I, i'm just using a little bit more of the entry just a little bit more of the apex and the exit speed is insane i can carry so much more exit speed but of course now we're getting to the banking so his more powerful engine is gonna make up for it i can even feel that my car is a little bit faster on the straight just because i'm getting the draft but even with the draft it's not possible to keep the speed that he has i was like come on come on let's go you can do it but he started slowly disappearing I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm starting to get tired of driving cars with no horsepower. I really want to try a car that has less cornering grip and has more top speed just to see how I perform in real life. Because here I think he gains like 5 seconds on the straights. Imagine, 5 seconds per lap. And again, I catch up like 2 seconds just in the bus stop. And then he disappears again. <laughs> but you know, this is a very long race. If we keep the consistency, if we keep the car intact, if we nail all the pit stops, we have a chance at winning this. Let's go. Because our driver lineup, we have lots of fast drivers. We have four very consistent drivers. We're able to pretty much on average match their lap times because they have some drivers that are fast, but they also have some drivers that are not so fast. And because of that, it kind of compensates a little bit. So anything can happen. It's a very long race. How fucking incredible is it going on to me? <laughs> oh, fuck. It was definitely an emotional moment for me to get into the banking for the first time after having done so much of that in the simulator. The bus stop is definitely the most scary bit of the track and the easiest place to crash. 
so I was always extra careful there, although I did have some moments there. It didn't take long for me to get on the limit though. I'm getting more and more used to real life now, so I was pretty much on pace after four laps of practice. When I got into the race, I was up for a three hour stint. We were a P2 in class, around 45 seconds behind the leader. I was driving my best lap after lap, and I was actually catching the leader. We brought the gap down to 38 seconds behind, and I felt like everything was perfect, and we could actually win this race. This was one of the best sensations in my entire racing career. Chasing another car and feeling that you are in the flow, just nailing corner after corner. I just wanted to keep going. But then slowly I started feeling something weird. With one hour left in my stint, I stopped enjoying my driving. I just wanted to take a break. I was tired. It was way too hot inside the car and I noticed I was starting to lose focus. At some point, it got bad enough that I started getting dizzy, sometimes not being able to even keep the car on the racing line properly. This is when I noticed that it was becoming dangerous for me, so I decided to end my stint early, even though that would mean a bad strategy decision for the team. As soon as I got out of the car, I realized how bad it was. I could barely stand, so I just drank as much water as I could and pretty much lie down on the pit lane to recover. I even forgot to help get the next driver in, which was a big mistake, but at that point, I was really not thinking straight. This is one of the things that no matter how I describe, you'll only understand if you actually experience it. On the second half of the race, we actually had a big, big problem with our brakes. This literally cost us an hour worth of repairs, but the team did magic to bring this car back on track. The thing is that because of how hot it was, everyone else had problems here and there, so half of our class was actually many laps behind trying to fix their own issues. That means we lost only one position back to P3 after fixing the car. But our chances of win were definitely gone at this point, with P1 not having any mechanical issue during the entire race. One thing not a lot of people from the same racing community know about Daytona in real life is that the weather plays a big role here. The climate is consistently changing and we did get a stage 3 severe thunderstorm warning. This is my chance to actually drive at night in the rain for the first time in my life. I really want to practice racing in the rain and doing it in an endurance event is pretty much the best scenario for getting a lot of track time in these conditions. What I didn't expect is that they would actually red flag the race. Basically, Daytona always closes the racetrack and pit lane whenever there is a lightning strike within an 8 mile radius. Then, they reopen the track only 20 minutes after the last lightning strike. The thing though is that we had a huge thunderstorm cloud that stayed on top of the track all night. So we had the last four hours of the race red flagged, which although guaranteed our podium, it ended our chances of catching up P2 and P1 at the end of the race during the rain. I also really wanted to have that experience to share with you guys, but it was not this time. Maybe in the future, hopefully. As always, I'm reinvesting all the money I make from coaching and my course to race more and more in real life and create better content for you guys and bring you on our racing journey. So thank you so much for trusting my work and supporting my channel. There's a lot of good stuff coming up, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the next videos. Bye!